coffee break with me. Oh, hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna have a heart to heart. And this heart to heart, he's going to revolve around how I've lost my sense of self along the way, along my YouTube journey and adventure. You guys know my introductions are always so Danny. <laughs> So about a week or two ago from when I'm filming this video, because I don't know when I'll upload it, but a little while ago, I saw my friend Andrea post a decluttering video. And I'm hoping she's converting it into a series because she really inspired me. So if you're watching, baby girl, you totally, totally inspired me. When I started to do YouTube, I did sort of an... It was a really brief room tour or, uh, yeah, room tour. I don't like to do makeup, I, I, don't, I don't believe in makeup collections where you open every single drawer and show you every single blush by name and lip, I, I don't believe in those videos at all. So unfortunately, you'll never see a makeup collection video from me. But when I did my room tour video, I was very explicit and I said, you know what, to me, makeup is, a perishable. It's something that goes bad. It's something that I can't really see it as a collectible. Um, I mean, it can be a collectible, but if you're using it for like business purposes, like me with a YouTube channel, I have to keep it in perspective. So um, my collection has obviously expanded from the my very first videos, but I've still tried to keep it in check. My type of personality, I feel very overwhelmed when I have too many things. I feel like I have so many choices that I don't fully take advantage of what I do have. Things like powders and blushes and eyeshadows, those could potentially live forever. Um, things like lip liners, they're so easy to sanitize because, I mean, really the tip is the only thing that's exposed, but they do dry out with time. Things like lipsticks, lip glosses, mascara, those suckers do go bad. Um, foundations, especially those without pumps, those go bad. The ones where you have to dip your finger into them, those definitely go bad. So it's important to keep your items into perspective. If you have really thick, very even cool skin like me where nothing really phases it, you could pretty much use expired makeup products and would never know it. But other people have really sensitive skin and you'll know when something is expired. You will get a hot, you'll get hives, a rash, blisters, pimples, um, swelling. I mean, a lot of stuff could happen. So it's really important, like I said, I'm not trying to preach, but it's important to keep into perspective when things expire and what's a reasonable amount to have. This is not a reasonable amount to have, but you know it's my, it's basically like my business right now or my career or what I do as a job. So it makes sense. Um, but if it was just me being another, I don't know. I think it's a little too much. <laughs> it's a little too much. But what I decided to do, and I wanted to thank Andrea for this, is to do kind of like a series where I go through uh, types of makeup products and kind of clean them out, um, whether I decide to give them away, um, pass them on, or throw them away. You know, I'll decide that eventually. But basically, stuff that does not belong here anymore that needs to find a new place to live is what we're going to go over. So I thought, because this is like taking off a band-aid, I thought I would start off slow, like say, uh, why don't we do primers and powder? We'll do primers and powders and kind of clean those out and then maybe next week we can do foundations and we kind of go on and on and on. I do want to say though, Check the description box below because I'm going to annotate expiration dates of certain products. So I will kind of make a list where I will say mascaras expire in this time frame, lipsticks in this time frame, eyeshadows in this time frame. So it'll be kind of like a guide for you to go to and compare it to what you guys have in your vanity or wherever you get ready and decide if I inspired you to clean out your collection, you'll have 
kind of like a Cliff's Notes guide on how to get rid of things that may or may not be expired. So I think we should just go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull out my primer drawer first. And that's this one right here and my primer drawer also has um, liquid illuminators so we'll go ahead and clean those out as well and then I'm also going to pull out my powder drawer this is where I keep all my face powders and we're just going to kind of go through this together and decide what we want to keep and what we don't okay, so this is an up close look this is not as organized as I was hoping it would be <laughs> This is an up close look of my primers and liquid illuminators. So we'll go ahead and do the liquid illuminators first. Um, and you can tell those are from here over here. Um, luckily for me, these have, most of them have a pump, so they're not going to go bad as, as quickly as something that doesn't. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this one from Gerard Cosmetics. This is a beautiful illuminator, especially for the summer. Um, this is from Revlon, and I, I haven't had this for more than six months, I would say. I really like it. It's very natural, very subtle. Um, I have had this one. Tater says hi. <laughs> I've had this one, and you could tell it's all separated completely. This used to be full. Like, it used to be full to the top. And I don't know if you can tell, it's like halfway down, and I've never used it. So that kind of freaks me out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that one. This is a Cogendo um, Illuminator. This is fancy stuff, you guys, and I never used it. Now I feel kind of like a fool for wasting it. So there's that one. This one is from NARS, and it's one of those deluxe samples. It's in Copacabana, but this is a cool tone illuminator. This would make me look very, very dirty, so I'm not going to use that. It's never been opened. I wonder if it's sealed. If it's sealed, I could pass it on. It's not, so I'm just going to have to toss that one, too. This one is from Benefit. It's one of my favorites. I got this as a gift at Sephora, but... It's definitely one of my favorites, but I feel like it's very similar to this one. I don't know. Let's see. This is so old. This is before I started YouTube. I've had it for... I've been on YouTube a year and a half, so it's more than a year and a half old. But I don't know if this is sanitary or not because the um, stuff comes out of the tip, but then I take my finger and wipe it off, so I doubt that's very... I wish there was a way to tell how much is in here. I'm going to have to think about that, but I'll put it on the side for now. So those are my illuminators. I'm going to go ahead and keep these two. Now moving on to primers. Um, you guys can tell I really like this primer. This is the primer that was in my uh, Mimi box, but I have it, I have several of the deluxe sample size, and then I have a brand new of the full size. So I really, really like these. Um, I think these have an expiration date on them. You guys, you guys, there's an expiration date printed on here, and I'm almost embarrassed to tell you what it says. Oh, I did not realize how long I have had these. Okay, let's just say I'm going to have to go put those in the trash can uh, very soon. <laughs> and then I have a bunch of samples. I don't know why I put samples in here with the intention of using them, and I never do. So I have a Laura Geller spackle. I have a Gorgeous Cosmetics... Um, first base. Um, I have a Too Faced oil free whatever. I have a Tarte Clean Slate Poreless. The purple one. Okay, for this one I didn't like. This one I've never used, but I'm sure my mom would probably like it because she has very oily skin. I've never used it, but it's brand new. Um, I've never tried this one. This is a Smashbox Photo Finish, the classic one. Again, it's oil-free, so I'm going to pass that on to my mom. I tried this one. This is the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Primer. If you have really oily skin, this is really good for you. It dries up your face. Like your complexion, it dries it completely. So this is a really good one for people with oily skin. If you don't have oily skin, it is much too drying for people without oily skin. So I'm going to skip on that one. This is my Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I really like this one, but it's very similar to the SNYX one. Oh, you guys are going to stone me, aren't you? I know there are some hardcore fans of this Hourglass one. It is so expensive, 
but I feel like it's very similar to this one. So because it's a nice primer, I'm gonna keep it, and I'm also going to keep this NYX one because this is just a small sample size. And then my two that are left in here, this is a hydrating primer. I really like this one from Pure Minerals. I have normal skin, I don't have oily or dry skin, but in the winter, I do get a little bit of dry areas around my face, and I'm thinking this one's gonna be my saving grace primer. So it's a hydrating primer, I really like that. Plus it feels really cooling and nice on the skin. I'm not even gonna tell you how old this one is. It's old and it needs to go in the trash. That's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we decided to keep. As far as primer goes, we're gonna keep this correcting primer from Pure Minerals. We're gonna keep this Angel Veil from NYX. We're gonna keep the Hourglass Mineral Veil. Um, and then we're on to Illuminators, the Gerard Cosmetics BB Plus, the Revlon Skin Lights, and uh, I can't bring myself to let this go. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the Girl Meets Pearl. So we went ahead and condensed it down to that. Let me uh, bring in my powders and I'm gonna put back my primers. Okay, so as far as powders go, I'm, I'm actually really excited with what's in front of me. I feel like I'm, we're really getting somewhere. So this is my powder um, drawer and I'm actually kind of proud of myself because it's usually a lot more full. I do though need to repurchase my MAC Studio Fix, which is one of my favorites, but uh, this is what we have with, well, this is what we're working with right now. The first one is this NARS Translucent Crystal best setting powder of life, baby Jesus for my whole life, ever and ever. I would repurchase it over and over again, but as you can tell, it's a loose powder. It will last forever. I love this thing. As far as drugstore goes, this uh, Maybelline Dream Wonder Powder is amazing. It's silky, it's soft, it's very fine. It's just, it's the most beautiful, delicate powder. Um, you could use it on top of like a BB cream or you could use it to set any type of foundation. I really like it. If you guys are curious, I'm in the color two or classic ivory. I really don't think I'm gonna get rid of much in here. <laughs> the next one in here is by Pure Minerals and this is their powder foundation in light tan. Unfortunately, this is really dark for me. I mean, two or three shades too dark. I was using it as a setting powder in the summer and it was working okay for a while, but right now there is no way I could use this. It's a great powder foundation, but it's definitely not my color, so I'm gonna have to pass that on. This here is the e.l.f. Uh, under eye setting powder. My friend Laura, Mrs. Lola Lynn, recommended this powder for me. Um, it's a really fine, translucent powder with pink and blue glitter, like microscopic glitter that just illuminates your face really beautifully, but I never use it. I like it, but I never use it, and there's no sense in keeping something that you never use. I always use this to set my under eye, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this on. My mom is a huge fan of this. I've used this maybe four or five times, so I'm just gonna pass it on to her. I know she would really like that. And then this one here with the really beautiful packaging is from Japanesque. This is a translucent powder. I really like it. It kind of reminds me of um, this one, except without magical powers. This one has like these magical powers where it blurs your wrinkles, your fine lines, your imperfections, your acne scarring. This just blurs everything. And I like this for filming. So if I have some funkiness going on my face, it blurs it. This one is good for every day. So it's almost like the cheaper alternative to this. So I'm definitely gonna hold on to that. Um, let's see, what else? This here in this fancy compact that you can tell <laughs> is Max um, powder in Pro Powder and Emphasize. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you guys about this. This is again like a setting powder. It's supposed to be good for setting your highlight or good for your under eye, but I feel like I never use it because I always use this one. I feel like it does the same thing. And for some reason, when I put this on, 
I feel like I, I can see it on my face. This one, I can never see it. It's like invisible. This one, I feel like I could see it. So I feel like I should pass it on, but I'll have to think about it. This is my powder foundation from Serenity and Scott, and you're going to see how sad it is with the broken mirror and the broken powder. I really like this stuff. This is a this is good stuff. This will give you baby soft skin and full coverage. So I really like that. I'm gonna keep it. I feel like I'm justifying powders because they last a lot longer. <laughs> Again, this is one of my favorites and I actually just opened this one. So there's no way I'm getting rid of it. It's brand new. Um, if you're looking for a good drugstore alternative to this one, this one is amazing. I've been using this for the last two or three years and it's just one of my favorites. It's never gonna stop being one of my favorites. If you do have facial hair on your skin like peach fuzz or just noticeable facial hair, I would avoid it unless you're going to put a refreshing spray on top or like a Max Fix Plus because it does cling on to all the peach fuzz that you have on your face. And it does come with one of these little sponges. This is brand new, I never use it, but. I like to keep it together. And the last one that I have is this one from Bobbi Brown. Uh, Mr. Man actually gave this to me and so I couldn't bring myself to returning it. It's a really beautiful illuminating powder. You kind of just swirl the colors together and it just brightens up your face really beautifully. You could use it as a setting powder. Um, you could use it on high points of your face like your cheekbones or even to set your under eye depending on which colors you, you focus on. But it's a really beautiful powder. It's just soft and it it doesn't, um, it, it's like a soft focus powder. You see right here where I applied it? It creates a really soft focus wherever you apply it. So it's a nice one to have. It's definitely a luxury product. So definitely, definitely, definitely a very luxurious high-end product, but not a must in a collection whatsoever at all. So we decided to keep the Bobbi Brown, of course, our Holy Grail, the NARS one. Um, let me do it like this so you guys can see. Definitely the NARS one. My, my two drugstore Holy Grail powders in color is the Maybelline Dream Wonder, and then in translucent is the one from Neutrogena. A powder foundation that I really love is from Serenity and Scott. The one from Japanese, which is a cheaper alternative to my NARS one. And then the ones we're going to get rid of are the Pure Minerals. That's too dark for me. If you guys are interested in a powder foundation, this is a good one. So this one's too dark. I'm going to just pass up on this. I never use it. And it's just there. And one of these days, I'm just going to gouge it with my nail or it's going to break. And it's just going to make a mess. And I'm going to get so upset. And then the... Elf under eye setting powder. So overall, we're going to get rid of all this stuff right here. It doesn't look like a lot, but remember, we didn't have that much to begin with. So it's definitely a good starting point. That is it for this first installment of Decluttering with Danny. Um, it just, it feels so good to go through item by item by item and figure out when was the last time you used it? Is it really worth it? Is there someone else that could use it more than you? Um, my rule of thumb is if I can't remember the last time I used it, I probably don't love it as much to keep it. So that's what I use when it comes to cookware, clothing, makeup, accessories. If I can't remember the last time I used it, Probably, I could probably live without it. So if you guys are interested in this decluttering series, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just declutter on my own with, without filming it and just do, do it by myself. <laughs> but let me know if you guys are interested in this decluttering series. Today we did primers and face powders. I'm thinking, if you guys are down for this idea, I'm thinking next time we do just foundations because you can tell I have a problem with foundation. Literally, how many people need these many foundations? Like, really? Um, and I don't even want to tell you how old some of those are. So, <laughs> please let me know if you guys are interested in this type of series. Thank you so much, Andrea, for um, inspiring me to do this. And I really hope that maybe I'll inspire one of you to do it. If you decide to, I hope, I hope you'll share with me. 
I don't know, tell me like the oldest product you found in your collection or tell me how many products you're getting rid of or I don't know, share something with me about your decluttering experience. I think that's it guys. Please let me know all your thoughts about decluttering and keeping a makeup collection in perspective in the comment section below. And as always, if you guys found this video useful, entertaining, or learned something, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys.